Welcome back, everyone. So um, we're going to have the pleasure now to listen to Sylvie for her third lecture, if I count correctly. And uh, um, I'd like just to point out that the slides are available online on the schedule page. Uh, so thank you, uh, Julia. So I uh, will uh, finish what I, uh, the chapter I, I began to, to lectures ago, and then I will switch to the other subject. And uh, so remember, so we, we have computed in this Gaussian case uh, the specific trajectories explaining uh, this history. So remember, so, and uh, so at the end, we, we found this uh, sort of uh, time reverse equation. And so it's uh, interesting in an ecological point of view since, uh, so you see that uh, here, so remember we were, in uh, on this uh, setting, uh, we are at the equilibrium. That means that uh, at x, at for all x t, you have so, so you for all uh, so um, sorry you for all time t, you have the profile which is a Gaussian law, f of x over lambda, and uh, which is uh, centered at minus c. And uh, what you see here is that when you pick up an individual at random at time t, the uh, trajectory is also pro <laughs> to, to explain uh, the ancestral traits of uh, this individual is this one, the time reverse trajectory. And it's an Archangelic process and it's attracted by zero. And that means that the, the, uh, the, the ancestor, uh, so here you have minus c, so. <laughs> If C is positive, you have zero. And that means that, uh, in fact, the, the trait explaining the individual alive at time t are in the tail of the stationary distribution. And so it's a way, this, uh, for me, this uh, way to, to compute these trajectories is, uh, is in, in the, a manner to capture the very small populations in the past explaining the individuals alive at time t, okay? The sort of signature of the environmental system. So here we, 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 we had uh, explicit so <laughs> trajectory. So what can be uh, extended for uh, uh, other uh, uh, diffusion uh, between jumps? So that's, uh, so we, we made some extension with uh, Benoit Henry and uh, Yeti Tran. And uh, so you can see that, in fact, there is a general context where uh, you have a Markov process. So the underlying Markov uh, diffusion process here can be a Markov process, a more general Markov process with general infinitesimal generator R and a semi-group P. And we consider the equation. So we have seen this, uh, this uh, PDE uh, in the last uh, lectures. So, uh, which is a dual equation in the sense that here you have the formal adjoint of L, R of X is a growth rate, and lambda, so we, we, it will be related to uh, the stationary measure, it's, uh, and we have seen that it is an eigenvalue. So, uh, and so it's a, it's a given uh, number. And uh, so we have to assume, so the main property in fact, is that L star has to generate a Markov process with the semi-group P star, and that we can, and we have to extend P and P star since up you have this duality uh, relation between uh, these two, uh, these two semi-group, and uh, you extend them uh, among uh, bounded and uh, L1 functions F and J. And uh, the second property is that one has to admit a positive, positive is uh, important here, stationary solution, capital F, and then, the, the, the par capital F lambda is an eigen solution of the eigenvalue problem where L star plus R of F is equal to lambda F, okay? So that's the main point. And uh, so for example, so uh, we extend it, uh, so yes. And in this, uh, we have seen yesterday that uh, the, the expression, what uh, the, the Feynman tax expression, which gives you Another semi group, which is not Markovian, super Markovian, and since uh, that depends, of course, of uh, the sign of this expression, so P hat star. And uh, what uh, 
you can prove by the, uh, is that at least weekly, uh, this P star, uh, uh, this uh, quantity P uh, hat star T of F is solution of this, this PD, which is the dual of the other one. Uh, and then it's easy to, to, start, to check that uh, <coughs> F, capital F, the stationary uh, function is uh, invariant by uh, this sum group. Okay, so that's the main, uh, the main framework in which you can uh, make some uh, such sort of computation. And uh, so we, for example, if you consider for X this uh, dynamics, that means you have a jump dynamics and you have the drill term corresponding to the change of uh, framework, think, uh, as we have did uh, earlier. And so here the the drifted Brownian motion is uh, replaced by some uh, jump process driven by uh, this uh, jump measure m of x, y, d, y, and uh, plus uh, the drift uh, with, here I, I, I took four instead of c sigma. And uh, so the main point is to prove uh, uniqueness. And uh, so here in this situation, there is a, a result by uh, Cloes, Bertrand Cloes and Pierre Gabriel, and uh, they proved in some, so the existence of a uh, unique solution uh, of uh, such equation under some uh, assumption on the growth rate. And also uh, you have to assume that lambda is positive. So that's the main point, which is not, like, because remember in the nonlinear case, lambda has to be the integral of capital L. Okay, that's uh, what uh, we, we did in the, in the first lecture. And so if you have this uh, expression, you can, go on and uh, develop uh, exactly the, the same uh, um, the, the same techniques huh? i gave you the, the infinitesimal generator of the of the sp spinal process uh, with a general form huh? with l and m of course in a general uh, framework you cannot compute explicitly the function m but nevertheless all works and here you can prove so you can define the inhomogeneous spine process y and uh, which is uh, you can compute uh, the, the law of the, its time reverse. The, 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 and uh, what uh, one can prove and that's due, so here we have uh, applied a very well known but for, for you for, perhaps all theory of time reversal Markov process. So I think in the books of uh, De La Chimelière it's well explained but you, there is also some paper by uh, Dinky. And uh, using that, you can prove that uh, the time reversal of the process Y with in, in remember that uh, Y has uh, the initial condition M capital T of F. So M capital T is defined exactly as we did uh, in the Gaussian case. And so this time reversal is started from F since we pick the individual randomly along this distribution, stationary distribution, capital F, which is not Gaussian in this case. And its semi-group is given, PR is given uh, by this expression. And you see here that uh, it's, uh, I forgot some uh, T, I'm sorry here, but uh, it's uh, an homogeneous, so the, the, the fact to, that the semi-group of, uh, so the fact that the, this Markov process in time in a reverse time is a homogeneous is a general property in this context. Okay. So here this uh, this semi group. I'm sorry, I forgot it's a small t, but it does not depend at all on capital T. Uh, in this case, so me, what what do you mean by uh, the process Y with initial condition MTF? So the process Y Y is the the spinal process. Right. You say spinal or spine? Spine, spine process. Yeah. Okay, so that is this one with the, 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 the which is inhomogeneous with uh, you know the generator GT that I gave uh, yesterday, which is uh, L of uh, uh, GTF F and T minus T minus F. We, we made the computation, remember? MT is, is uh, defined exactly as uh, as we did in the in the first lecture. 
or second. Right, but okay. uh, which, and so pro that, which process? So you, do you have use? Y, and then so it's inhomogeneous, and you want to compute in this general setting where L is not Gaussian anymore. We want to to compute what is the time reverse process. Yeah, I understand. But uh, so the init initial condition does it refer to the initial? Ah, condition the initial condition the... here is for Y. For why that means if uh, so we you remember we prove that this process for this process the initial condition is biased by the fact that you condition on the individuals living at time t and we had we proved yesterday that the initial condition was empty capital f because uh, so the the formula re relying uh, the historical process say to um, which one is this one yes uh, this is, a, is always true that I made uh, things uh, general here. Okay. And so that's uh, the MT which appears here is due to this formula. Okay. Which is general. You see here, I never use the fact that L was going to the, the generator of the volume motion. Because and it's and MT general. is typically small, right? So you start. Sorry. MT is typically small. So you started from a sub uh, probability. That depends, that depends on the growth rate. Because MT of X is. Uh, it's a uh, I mean, where it is, is uh, here. It's uh, the expectation of this quantity. So, so here you have uh, in the general setting you have a function r r of x to, to obtain the the uniqueness of the stationary uh, solution. You you need to to have at least uh, r of x as uh, to be uh, bounded on the limit uh, when x tends to plus or minus infinity of r of x has to be a minus infinity, something like that, uh, to, to, to have the same uh, properties at one minus uh, x squared over two value of mt of x. Okay, I'm, I'm just wondering, so what do you mean by initial condition? mt times f is the density of a measure, which is not necessarily a probability measure? Uh, yes, so the, the, the initial condition, so you, we have seen that this is equal to f, capital F. So there, there is a, a what do, what, well, ah, what uh, do you mean? So if you want to speak about probability, you divide by lambda. That's, that's uh, perhaps that was the question because uh, the exact expression, uh, yes, give you this. So the, the, the initial condition, so as sorry, has to be on, that's, that was your question. That yeah, has to be yeah, normalized yeah. by lambda yeah. because we know that this, we have com computed mm -hmm. this, Yesterday in the Gaussian case, but uh, here if you have the duality between the PDE, you have exactly the same thing. Okay, that's why I, I, I gave the, the okay. two PDE. Yeah, thanks. Okay, I, I will finish by uh, by these remarks. Uh, just uh, for example, in the case of uh, jump processors, you can compute the generator of the infinitesimal. You have an explicit form of uh, the infinitesimal generator of uh, this reverse time process y, which is given here. And uh, so it's it's not so far from the uh, relation you obtain when you consider okay, stationary distributions. But uh, so I, since uh, uh, I have no, no time to explain that this. And the uh, second point that I uh, wanted to say is that there is a sort of, uh, how, how they say, where is uh, Raphael, a companion paper where uh, uh, by uh, Raphael Forian, Jimmy Garnier, and so on, and uh, why they, they consider this expression and develop some uh, analytical uh, uh, study to, uh, to also uh, understand such sort of uh, question. Okay, so that's, uh, uh, that's the end of the first part of, uh, of uh, this course. So uh, my point of view is that Perhaps, of course, it's a very simple case, but we, you see that you can, uh, uh, you can add different uh, environmental uh, uh, behaviors, replacing uh, just uh, the environment, uh, which is uh, here very simple, since it's a linear in T, you can have jumps, for example, if you want to, to see uh, environmental jumps or even the stochastic events or, uh, and so uh, you can add uh, so, but uh, this point of view to, to come back to the ancestor um, seems to me uh, interesting by itself. Okay.
So now I, I switch to uh, the second topics I wanted to, to discuss here, and uh, which is uh, especially focused on the population modeling for uh, microorganisms, uh, uh, where, uh, as I explained in the introduction, there is uh, uh, there is no sex, but for bacteria, for example, even there is it's asexual, but uh, uh, there are in a transmission in, in, of information during bacterial life, and it seems that it plays a main role, in particular because it's related uh, for, for, for the biologists with who I am working uh, to uh, bio antibiotic resistances. And so I would like I would like to 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 show you on this uh, uh, simple uh, biological modeling all the possibility uh, we have to to model uh, evolution and uh, depending on the different property we have on the mutation uh, probability or size as ex CPD explained uh, yesterday and uh, we will see that uh, depending on the po the assumption we have we can develop uh, very different tools. Uh, and obtain uh, uh, different uh, way to describe uh, evolution of the population dynamics. Okay, so I am always in the same uh, setting. I mean, I have individuals which are characterized. Uh, here I take uh, the trait in a compact subset of R, but it certainly can be generalized. It's for simplicity. K will be will stay. It's always my uh, parameter scaling for the population size. And I uh, consider so yeah, I, to to make things clear with respect to the first two lectures. I define my population here by nu k, which is the point uh, uh, measure valued process describing the evolution of uh, the, the dynamics of the population. Okay, so here x i is the trait of the individual high uh, where I have labeled uh, the individual in my population. So I describe the transition here. So I have birth. And so uh, I assume, uh, as previously, that uh, the individual with threat X will give birth or will divide, if we speak about cell or bacteria, uh, at a rate B of X, and that B is continuous on X. And PK scale, will scale the mutation probability. So with probability, so here the, the mutation will arrive when uh, the cell divide, okay? That's uh, biological. It's uh, when you have division, you have a, a replication of DNA and you can have a, a, accumulate uh, mistakes uh, during this uh, replication. And so with probability one minus PK, uh, the offspring inherits of uh, the ancestor trait. And with probability PK, a mutation occurs. And the trait mutation will be chosen according to a certain uh, measure. So in a, usually in evolution theory, so they are in a, uh, one considers a, that uh, either PK tends to zero, but PK tends, can tend to zero in different way. For example, you can have PK tends to zero such that also K PK tends to zero when K tends to infinity, that means PK is very, very small. Or you can have PK tends to zero but uh, KPK tends to uh, constant or even tends to infinity. And so uh, you have different way to uh, consider rare mutations. And you can also have PK of order one when K tends to infinity, but the mutation uh, steps are small as uh, CPD presented yesterday in the last part of the talk, okay? And depending on this assumption, you obtain different way first to work and also different outcomes of evolution. Okay, so uh, the, for, for uh, uh, species which are uh, able, elaborate as uh, mammals, for example, we can consider that PK very, very small is a good assumption, but for micro, microorganisms, uh, in fact, there are a lot of uh, uh, mutation uh, and uh, we can consider that P is a, uh, is not small, but that the mutation steps are small. So depending on the species, you can have a different uh, assumption. Okay. And here, so we assume that uh, during the life of individuals, you can have uh, what is called horizontal gene transfer that I will call transfer in the, in the talk. 
And that, and uh, we model uh, the, the conjugation, which is uh, the, the transfer I explained with the plasmid in the, in the introduction. And we assume that there is one donor, one uh, recipient, and uh, that when they are in contact, and here we will uh, um, model, uh, in this case, the contact by fre frequency dependent, but it could also, we can also consider different way to, to be in contact, uh, dependency. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, and um, uh, density dependent or a mix between density or frequency dependent. But anyway, when you have the contact between two individuals, then uh, the donor will give its traits to the recipient. Okay, that's the way it happens. Uh, remember, this plus mean we go from one particle to, for one uh, bacteria to, to another one. And this can depend, so here we give the right for one individual with trait X to choose a partner with trait Y. And so it's tau of XY over K times the total mass of the population. And when after the, this contact you have, the new traits are XX. That means, so you have an addition of an individual with trait X and you have a death of an individual with trait Y. And so uh, usually, since plasmids are costly, as I explained in the introduction, we very often, so in the example, we will choose what is called unilateral plasmid transfer, where we will assume that uh, tau is null if x, so you can only transfer uh, to a larger and larger trait, okay? Which is, uh, can be uh, seen in the application as a sort of quantity of uh, residue. Gene resistance, for example. Okay, and so we have this, and we assume that an individual with trait uh, X can die with uh, its intrinsic death rate D of X, and you have competition. And here, I, uh, I, uh, this, uh, the competition is not fixed; it's not uh, a constant C. Uh, uh, it depends on the, all the individuals alive at time T in the population. And uh, you see of X, X, I is uh, the competition pressure between the individual with threat X and an individual with threat X, I. And it's renormalized by one over K. And since the uh, population size is of order K, as I said, it's here we, we can see this uh, fact that this such sort of competition models the fact that uh, we consider that the amount of resources is fixed. And then if you have uh, of order K individuals, the biomass per individual should, could be of order one over K. That uh, could be a uh, biological explanation of such competition pressure. And we assume here that uh, without competition, so uh, the population with threat X is super critical, the growth rate is positive, but you have this competition which will be non zero at any point, okay? And which will, help to regulate the population size. And here you assume, so for technical conditions, that we have the second, at least the second order moment for the total mass of the initial condition. And then, uh, as I explained earlier, you can prove that such sort of uh, moment condition propagates on finite time interval, which help you to prove uh, the existence of uniqueness of the process of solution of a stochastic differential equation driven by uh, different uh, Poisson point measure, huh? as I show you in the other. Uh, so uh, so uh, if we consider at this time scale of order where the time is of order one in the sense that we will consider the process on a finite time interval zero capital T, then one can prove one has a large uh, population results that we assume that when K tends to infinity, PK tends to a certain P, which can be zero or not. And uh, I introduce the flux, the transfer flux, which is the difference between the rate tau of XY and the rate tau of YX, okay? Which quantify the uh, exchanges of information between uh, individual with threat X and Y. And we can prove that when T is uh, positive, and if the initial condition uh, and a new zero K converges in low or in probability to a deterministic measure size zero, sorry, 
And uh, here I will uh, assume that it is absolutely continuous with the big measure to have real function at the end, but uh, it's not necessary. And so we can prove that the sequence of uh, process of uh, jump processes nu k will convert in probability to the solution u, which is continuous in time, which is uh, with measure valued, which is given. Okay, so it's a weak u, uh, and here I. Since I assume that the initial condition is uh, absolutely continuous with respect to Lebesgue measure, it propagates in time. Because here, a different uh, in the previous uh, lecture, I had the Gaussian part, which uh, which uh, re re regularized the solution and gave density even if the initial condition was not. But here, since you have only an integral differential equation, if you want to obtain real function a solution, you need to have such sort of uh, Assumption at, at times. And so we have this nonlinear equation. So here, nonlinearity, you have one nonlinearity, which comes from the competition, which is non local. Here, it's a non local nonlinearity, which uh, generalizes the rho of uh, focal Vesto. And uh, you have this term, which is a mutation term, which is linear in U. And you have this term, which is uh, the transfer term. And uh, which is, you see that at this macroscopic point of view, you only see the flux between uh, the two transfers. That means that if the transfer is symmetric, you don't see anything. If alpha is equal to zero, at this macroscopic uh, level that disappears. And uh, that's really more interesting uh, to, to see non uh, asymmetric. Thing. And uh, so this equation is, uh, I think, interesting by, by itself. And, uh, <coughs> To prove this convergence is, uh, as I explained in the first lecture, so we prove uh, it by uh, compactness, uh, identification, uniqueness arguments. And uh, so compactness, as I explained, is related to tightness of the load of the population processes in UK. And uh, so at, to my knowledge, uh, one don't see uh, anything on the long time behavior. So there are, in, in the case without transfer, uh, that was uh, without this part, uh, the long time behavior of such equation was uh, studied by uh, David Jaban, Michel Raoul. It was your uh, thesis, no? No, right. And uh, but then in the, with transfer, so they are uh, papers, but it's not exactly the same. Uh, <laughs> The same equation for uh, where the particular the paper by Mangal and Raoul, where they study some tr proteins transfer and they study steady state for such equation. But uh, so the long time behavior, it's open up to you. And uh, so the point I, I wanted to mention is that uh, when k, when pk tends to zero at this time scale, that means a finite time scale, that's why I say order one the mutation terms disappear in this macroscopic point, uh, limit. But uh, we, we, for people here, we are probabilists, so we know that uh, we have the mutation, but they are very, very, they are rare. And that I think something, so what, what happens that, it means that they are so rare that you cannot see the effect of this mutation if you, you consider finite times. And you have to wait for a longer time to see the effect of this mutation. That's the essential idea. And uh, uh, whatever you, you consider, if you have a very small, um, very rare events in the probability step uh, setting, you have to wait for a very long time to see them. And uh, that's uh, something uh, some people in finance uh, some forgot sometimes. Okay. <laughs> Almost sure uh, is not sure. <laughs> okay, so I come back for the moment to this equation, but uh, uh, imagine that uh, nevertheless, so we assume that PK tends to zero. So in the limit, we have P is equal to zero. And so that means that we have no mutation anymore. And we consider situation with only two traits at the beginning. Okay, it's to understand what the, what does it mean? So if you have only two traits and no mutations, so in the limit, you can describe your measure uh, valued function u by only uh, two quantity, which has a number of individual with trait x in the limit. Uh, the, 
and uh, the number of individual of threat wise. So uh, new K, uh, it's a population size divided by K. So N, X, and A, and Y give you the population size up to K. And uh, so you have this, that exactly uh, in this uh, particular case, that exactly the, 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 this ODA system is exactly equivalent to, to, the, to the PDE, huh? the same thing. And so you have, if uh, the transfer flux is zero, you have a competitive load cable terra system, well known competitive load cable terra system. And uh, if not, you have uh, by this additional term. Of course, the transfer does not change the mass. So the sum of both is zero, but alpha is a sign, hein? alpha is a flux. It can be either positive or negative. Okay. And of course, if there is only one threat, so the equation, yeah, you, you forgot a large part of the system. You have only one equation, which is well known. It's a famous <coughs> logistic equation. And you know on this equation that there is a unique stable equilibrium. Okay. And uh, so our point of view will, will be an evolutive point of view. That means we assume that at the, at, uh, at the beginning of the story, we, our population is uh, close to its equilibrium and it's a resident po population with a unique trait X. So it's, uh, we say monomorphic and uh, some mutants arrive and how do uh, these uh, mutants uh, change the, the population distribution? That's the question, okay? That's why uh, I am interested to know this quantity. Okay, so if you uh, study the stability of the system. So the, the phase diagram is different of what you have in the load cable terra uh, settings, where uh, this quantity uh, you have only the the, four, the first four pictures. And here, due to this uh, transfer term, you can have two uh, more uh, two different uh, two additional different situ phases, uh, situation yeah, additional phases diagrams which are these two, 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 two uh, pictures, okay? And uh, so what, as I said, what we are interested in is to, we, to consider situation where we are close to, uh, to the population and uh, to the, the equilibrium for the trait X. And uh, here we have uh, n bar X. And uh, we, we want to know how it uh, behaves when uh, some mutant arrives. So what, uh, what if we are in this situation, we, we go uh, to example n bar y, the equilibrium of the population where you have only threat y, or uh, do you come back to n bar x or something inside? Uh, can we have coexistence as it is in the picture three, for example, or in the picture five? Do we have coexistence or six of the two traits x and y? So that's the question. So when uh, you, um, uh, yes, a particular case that I will not develop here, but we will see uh, in, uh, in the simulation, for example, is that when K C is constant, we can prove that uh, it's well known when you don't have transfer, but it's also true when you have this transfer between uh, the population. Uh, is that uh, when C is constant, you cannot have exist, uh, coexistence. That means either you, you stay at the equilibrium uh, n bar x, or so either you go to the equilibrium n bar x zero, or you go to uh, zero n by one. That means you, you can not have coexistence of the two traits in the long term uh, population behaviors. Okay. And this property in the, the usual uh, in the uh, theory of adaptive dynamic is called, that was, I think that the terminology was introduced by Hans Mess and his co-author, and his co-author, it it's called invasion implies fixation. That means that if you only go in your system to either n bar x zero or zero n by y, that means that if you have invasion of y, you are you will be in this situation since you can, don't, you cannot have fixation. Okay. So that's a standard terminology. 
Okay. So when uh, it's also well known that uh, in the case of uh, competitive load carb alterer system, uh, the, the strategy is uh, so the, the, the long-term dynamics are driven by the knowledge of the sign of a certain function. And this function, which is called invasion fitness in this setting, is uh, this one. So when alpha is equal to zero, we, we, have, we define this fitness function that you can see as a gross rate of the population, subpopulation of trait Y when uh, you are very close to the, the equilibrium n bar x zero. That means that, of course, you have individuals. Uh, if, if not, you will not see the, the equation in Y. But uh, when, uh, if, <laughs> if you are close to this quantity, you can imagine that if you consider the gross rate of an individual with trait Y, it's the gross rate, the intrinsic gross rate of this individual minus the competition term. But since the individuals of trait Y are in a very uh, small number, uh, you, uh, you can consider that the, the competition is essentially due to the individual with trait X, which are close, and the number of this individual is close to n bar X. That's a, that can be a, an a explanation of why this function plays a main role. And uh, one can prove, uh, so we can compute it here, it's easy to compute. And uh, uh, one can prove that uh, the, the fact that the system goes to uh, zero n bar y when ten, t tends to infinity is related to the sign of f and if f of y x is positive and uh, uh, and also the, you are you need to have both and remark first that uh, f is not symmetric that is very important huh? and especially if you read that and uh, and also that it's null uh, on the diagonal it's easy to see with uh, explicit with the explicit form and so the, the knowledge of the signs of these uh, fitness functions uh, essentially uh, allows you to uh, guess uh, what uh, will be the outcomes of the dynamical system. So in this uh, case with transfer, there is an invasion fitness, we play essentially the same role and where uh, you will add uh, in the, to define this fitness, we, we, we have as uh, earlier the growth rate of Y, the competition pressure. And here, if you consider well, how the, the transfer impacts individual with trait Y. And uh, so if you consider in the previous uh, quantity here, I, I consider the equation in Y, and if N uh, Y is almost zero and N X almost N bar X, you see that you have alpha of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, minus alpha of X Y, so it's alpha of Y X, alpha, <laughs> and uh, divided by n bar x plus times n bar x, okay? So it's exactly alpha of uh, y x. And then uh, what you observe is that this new invasion fitness is f of y x, so the invasion, uh, the, the usual invasion fitness plus alpha of y x. But alpha as a sign, okay? And f also f, but uh, so you can see uh, immediately in this form that uh, the transfer can uh, revert the outcomes of the evolution. Okay, so that means that. Uh, so I uh, I will write it here. If f if uh, uh, alpha of y x is uh, greater in absolute value than f of y x, and if uh, they have different sign implies that uh, the transfer reverse outcomes of the dynamical system since we change the sign. Then there is a trade-off. So this, uh, this invasion fitness, so you have this demography part, which is related to the growth rate. You have an ecological part, which is related to the competition. And now you have this transfer of information. And there is a sort of trade-off between uh, these three, uh, um, this, this, uh, three behaviors. And uh, because to, uh, to be sure that Y can invade the resident population with threat X, we need 
to have s greater than zero. But you see that even if f is negative, you can obtain that s is positive. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so I show you a simulation. So, and so that was uh, that was the first question that uh, Maryam El Karoui, the biologist with who I am working, asked me. Uh, how can we? Why can uh, we observe in the nature? Uh, bacteria with costly plasmid and which uh, seems to to stay in the population even if they are very costly for the bacteria and so it's an answer to uh, to uh, so this uh, trade-off can uh, help to to understand the, this and so you see in the uh, in the first uh, simulations uh, we took uh, so uh, uh, here I, I wrote uh, capital a and small a so the the resident trait is a small a, and you see that is, it is a, it has a, so d is equal to zero. So the birth rate is a one, and for the mutant, the red mutant, it is one half. So it's less, uh, it's less adaptive a priori, but you have a unilateral transfer from small a to capital A. That means that you will, every, every time you have a contact between uh, an individual with small a and an individual with capital A, you will exchange uh, the small a in one capital A. Okay. And uh, so here we take C is equal to one. And one, what, so uh, here uh, for those bacteria, the, the competition pressure is identical. But uh, in, in this case, where capital A is really deleterious a priori, because of the transfer, you observe the invasion and even the fixation of, uh, of this mutant. Okay. Huh? So you see at the beginning, you have the population which, uh, of a trait small a, which is close to its equilibrium. The mutant appears, and then it will, uh, its subpopulation will increase. And uh, because of the transfer and the competition, then you will have a regressment of the population with trait X by the population with trait Y. And this, in the second case, we always have a deleterious mutant and uh, but here it is uh, even more costly because you see that the competition pressure for the mutant is very strong and nevertheless we can obtain so here we keep it's another picture where you keep you have co you keep coexistence which is a more biological uh, setting in fact you have coexistence between uh, bacteria with the mutant and uh, and the resident bacteria okay so transfer can have a, a strong impact, in fact, in this uh, evolutionary uh, outcomes. Okay, so now, so for the moment, uh, I, I, uh, I have only considered a large population uh, dynamics since I consider the, 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 the dynamical system. Now I would like to, to understand better how it works. How, I mean, how, what, what happens here when a mutant appears? Okay, what happens from, uh, so I first consider uh, a population which is only with straight X at equilibrium, uh, close to its equilibrium. So we assume that uh, we have only a trait X at, uh, and uh, that uh, new K, uh, the, the, no, the number of individuals with straight X, uh, which is here the number, the total number of individuals renormalized by K, is close to n bar x and uh, so all this uh, is described when uh, so we consider k tends to infinity so we consider large k okay and uh, so we know by uh, the large deviation principle that the time to exit a neighbor arm of the equilibrium is of order exponential to some constant time k okay so before this exit time we can uh, consider that the population size is essentially k times n bar x. Okay. So remember that new k is a uh, uh, new k one is n k, so the population size over k. Okay. We have renormalized uh, the population. So. Uh, so if I uh, want to estimate the mutation rate, you have the, the total, the populational mutation rate, you have the individual mut uh, birth rate, 
Remember, I have mutation when I, I divide or I reproduce times the probability of, of uh, to mutate times the number of individuals of the population, and which is approximately k n bar of x. So you see that uh, to uh, obtain some uh, finite, uh, uh, imagine that uh, pk uh, tends to zero, and uh, and imagine that k pk tends to zero. So if, if k pk tends to zero, uh, in this case you will see, don't see anything. Okay. So you have to wait an order to k pk to see something. So here I I will consider this. Uh, very rare mutation case where I will assume that KPK tends to zero when K tends to infinity. And here, so we see immediately that if we have this assumption, uh, then uh, the good time scale to observe the mutations is a scale T over KPK. Okay. And so we will study the process at this time scale. And if we assume uh, as we said, and to 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 make this uh, correct, uh, as I said, we have to need the fact that the population size is close to k n bar of x. That means we have to assume that this one over k p k is less than uh, the the time the time uh, to go out a neighborhood of the equilibrium. Okay. So the first assumption we will took for this mutation probability pk is that when pk, k pk, which tend, k pk first tend to zero, and second one over k pk is really smaller than the, this uh, uh, exponential, uh, to smaller than, to any exponential to the k time uh, positive constant. Okay, that's a large deviation principle. Okay. So now, uh, when the mutant appears at the beginning, you have a very few individuals in straight Y. So it's stochastic. And so it's stochastic. And if we consider and, uh, at the beginning, the, the competition is only due to the individual with straight X, as we said before. And the population uh, <coughs> with straight X is close to its equilibrium. So at the beginning, the population uh, the subpopulation size of individual with straight Y with this will be very close. Of course, we have to write things more carefully, but we'd be very close of a binary branching process, branching. And uh, with birth rate B of Y plus the transfer uh, from X to Y. And uh, the death rate will be D of Y plus the competition due to individual with straight X plus since the individual with straight Y is negligible at this scale when the mutant arrives, plus the transfer from Y to X, okay? Which is a death for Y, for the subpopulation Y. So, so we have a, a standard birth and death process. Uh, and so we know what is its survival probability. So what we need, so perhaps I can. So it's uh, so what I am explaining is essentially the, that was the thesis of uh, Nicolas uh, Champagna, and uh, so we we have we have this n bar x here. We have uh, uh, our resident population, which uh, fluctuates uh, which fluctuates around this, and then a mutant arrive, and we compute first. The way so here we have the population. If I write the population size is k n bar x approximately, and here we want to know when and uh, at which time the subpopulation with straight y can attain a certain quantity epsilon, et, uh, eta. Eta is positive, and remember k tends to infinity. So when k tends to infinity, eta k will tend to infinity. So we have essentially we need the survival probability of this branching process. Okay. And so you know that the, the survival probability, first you have to assume that the gross rest is positive, and you have to divide by p. Okay. That's the survival probability for the, for a branching, uh, for a binary uh, branching process or birth and linear. Uh, <coughs> birth and death process. 
And then when what if you compute, you 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 obtain exactly the fitness function S capital S. You obtain d of y plus tau of y x minus d of y plus so minus c of x n bar x and minus t of x y. And so you see that you are divided by. So what is b here is the sum of b of the verse right of y plus the transfer from x to y. And so it's exactly, so you have the positive part of this quantity. And then you have R of y minus the competition term, which is exactly, so here is the fitness f, the function f of y x minus, so plus alpha of y x, the flux, the transfer flux divided by this quantity, okay? So what you see here is that first, this quantity, which is exactly the fitness capital S of YX is positive. So um, we will have a survival of this population with probability, uh, the fitness function uh, <coughs> over the birth B of Y plus tau of YX, okay? So now, what, uh, what do we, so perhaps the population bega, began to, to disappear because of the competition, but not so much. But now, so the, the, the resident population has a size of order k, and you know now that the subpopulation with threat y has also a size of order k. So when, when you can make k tends to infinity, now mm -hmm. your system will be very close to uh, the dynamical system. So you can study your dynamical system and imagine uh, that the fitness S of X was is negative, you know that you will have the, uh, uh, the fixation of the threat Y. So the dynamical system uh, tell you that, uh, I can, uh, so you will have uh, something like that, for example, and uh, something like that. But exactly, I am explaining the, the first simulation here, okay? And uh, so, so I forgot to mention that what times you have to take to go from uh, one individual to k individual. So you can prove it uh, rigorously, but it's easy to, to understand. Huh? So we have seen that here, the growth rate is S of y x. And you know, so you have a branching process. You know that the expectation of this branching process and y of t, from one individual to K. So that is equal to the exponential of S of Y X, which is positive T. And you want it to be of order capital K. And the time necessary to, to obtain that, of course, is uh, logarithm of K over the fitness function S of Y X. Okay, that's usual. And uh, you can prove it uh, directly on the process that only the intuition, it's not a proof. Okay, and uh, now so you have this part of dynamical system which is of order one. So here you have logarithm of k, and then eventually, depending on the, the outcome of the, of the dynamical system, but here you can arrive to a small quantity of individual with threat x, and then you you begin to be very stochastic because there are a few individuals. And uh, in this case, you have also to describe the, the, the birth and death process of um, corresponding to the size of the subpopulation with threat X, which will be uh, a subcritical uh, branching uh, process and which will go to extinction with probability one and the duration to go for the extinction from K to uh, say one individual is also uh, of order logarithm of K. Okay, that's a well-known result uh, in probability. <clears throat> and you can explain it exactly with a, such a sort of uh, uh, intuition, okay? And so all these phases, these competition phases, which consist in the replacement here in this case of the population, the resident population with threat X to 
a subpopulation which is here, a resident population with threat Y, that takes the time of order log logarithm of K. Okay. And of course, this picture is true if you don't have any mutation arriving when you are studying these competition phases. Okay. So uh, if you want to uh, see what happens, and you will see that the picture becomes more complicated when you have different other mutations, we, we speak about clonal, uh, about, uh, in, clonal interference. You can see paper by uh, Biga, which is also a biologist with whom we are working, and Smadi. And they, they consider different cases where the other mutation arrive in this picture. But here we will decide of some uh, scale separation assumption, which will make that you cannot have, with large probability at least, uh, another uh, mutation. And uh, the way to do that, so remember, we already have, we took the time scale one over KPK, really smaller than exponential to the KP for any V positive. And we will assume that the muta mutation time scale, that it will be greater than uh, this, the time needed for this competition phase, this logarithm of K. Okay. And so that's what uh, is called uh, the assumption of uh, time scale separation, meaning that you will have a succession of very short competition, uh, because logarithm of K is small, so short competition phases and appearance of mutants, okay? And so this uh, heuristic of uh, this, uh, this uh, development, uh, uh, where, uh, so I, I can, yes, I can continue before to do that. So what, uh, I'm already finished? No. <laughs> <laughs> no so, so I finish uh, this, uh, it, it is this. So, uh, so you see that if you consider this time scale, logarithm of K is, uh, is zero. And so what, so all this picture is, uh, is uh, essentially one point. And what you will see at the scale one over K PK is uh, only uh, K n bar X individual uh, at time. Uh, if you are normalized by K, you will see n bar X individual with threat X and you have a jump to n bar Y individual with threat Y, okay? So that was, uh, and so we did that for the first mutation, but of course, because of that, you imagine another mutation then, and, and uh, you can uh, refine this. And uh, because of the Markovian property, you can see reiterate uh, the argument and uh, prove rigorously that at the time scale, uh, under this uh, scale separation assumption, at the time scale, so you consider the process the population process at the time scale T over KPK, when KPK tends to zero, it will converge. So in the finite dimensional distribution to a jump process uh, and uh, that, uh, so the jump, so we, you will jump from N bar X individual with threat X to N bar Y individual with threat Y with a, a, Y chosen according to the mutation measure and uh, at rate, so we have computed it, so the birth rate at this time scale, the birth appearance times the probab survival probability, okay? And that was was called in the heuristic by Hans Mess and his co-author, uh, the trait substitution sequence, and proved, uh, so in this invasion in price fixation case by uh, Nicolas Champagnat, and, uh, which generalized it uh, in, uh, in other ways. So that's, uh, so that's, uh, so for the students, uh, try to see why uh, you cannot prove that in a score, usual score topology. I try to find an argument. It's an exercise. <laughs> and, uh, it's not uh, at all the same sort of, uh, of convergence here. More degenerate. <clears throat> Are there any questions? Uh, I agree that uh, above eta k, the uh, dynamical system definitely kicks in. And I also agree that close to zero, the, the, the fluctuations are uh, very relevant. But I'm wondering 
uh, is there a border uh, where the dynamical system takes over, which is much closer to zero uh, than, e than eta k? I mean, yes, we are looking for that in square root of k. And yes, you're right to ask this question because, for example, we we work with a, a, a medical doctor, phys doctors in, in leukemia, and uh, the asymptotic is a number of cell uh, stems. So it's <laughs> sorry, I apply things, but uh, but uh, it seems that uh, we need uh, th this sort of level correspond to a di diagnostic level for for them. And uh, effectively, that it's very, we need to obtain information on, a, on smaller levels. Right, and, maybe uh, even smaller than square root of k. Yes, right? yes. So we, we, we are, uh, with Vincent Bancet, we are doing that just now. But, uh, but not so easy because you have to compare what happens with the fluctuations. So, because it is such sort of scale, the, the macroscopic behavior and the fluctuation are at the same levels. So that's. Um, any other questions? So, so, uh, so I didn't fully understand when you're in 2D space, well, when you'd only have two traits and when you have a continuous trait space. So uh, for, for the moment, so I introduced uh, the framework, the large population framework, but now I try to, to describe how mutants arrive in the, in, as I said, in the setting where you have at the beginning, a monomorphic population with only one trait, and what happens? Uh, right. Okay, but, and, and uh, you're relying on the, one point of view right, on right. the characterization of the well, the phase diagram, well, the characterization of the different phases in the two D yeah. phase, right? Yes, exactly. Because uh, just here, I simplified a lot, so I assume that I forgot. To ex uh, sorry, because I forgot. If you're right, to say that to to have um, sorry, where's the CRM? To have this CRM. I have to assume this uh, uh, invasion implies fixation principle that we see. We, we saw it was true when the constant C was uh, the, the competition pressure was constant. That means that you cannot have coexistence. Right. But you can generalize that what we did uh, with uh, Nicola. You can generalize in any situation, but it's very really more uh, that takes too long time right. to. And you Even start to, to write the theorem. <laughs> and you start from an unstable equilibrium and you will converge to a stable equilibrium. No, at the beginning, this one is equilibrium. Yeah, but it's unstable. But uh, it, it began to, to, to leave the equilibrium because of the competition be, with these individuals. Right. We I become mean, in a, a large no, number. So it's an unstable equilibrium in the deterministic system. If you wish, but if you don't have a mutant, it will stay uh, stable. I mean, uh, that. Uh, that's in the logistic equation. That's why I uh, I took time to uh, to oh, sorry um, to uh, to show you uh, this. When you have only one threat, you, the equilibrium is stable. Sure, but in the two D <laughs> system, it's the unstable yeah. equilibrium. Yeah. So so my, so the, the next question uh, is uh, it is unstable because uh, the fitness the S is positive. And my, my next question is uh, is there one slide back please to the the pictures. Uh, to, to, uh, to what? Uh, well, the, the pictures. So, is there a characterization in the case where you have three traits or, or more? <laughs> you know that for a competitive lot Cavaltera system, three, di three dimensions, that's a paper, a paper by uh, Lucy Mann, there are 33 different okay. equilibria. 33 uh, without transfer. So, because <laughs> we studied that with uh, Nicolas, that was that's helpful. <laughs> so, uh, so that's why. Uh, so we, we tomorrow and uh, and on Thursday we will see di different uh, other mutation scales, which will lead to different uh, way to to study uh, this evol the evolutive scenarios. But uh, you see that this one, uh, except in such short of separation time scale, you, you cannot go uh, well, really further. But for three. For two mutations, you can go to uh, the paper by Charles Madi and uh, Sylvain Bia. So, no question on the line? Okay, so let's uh, thank Sylvie again.